Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Darius on the because today's the 13th of April 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Uh welcome to this um Easter morning uh Monday's morning recorded session uh, where we're gonna have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um the usual stuff. Um, some charts that we looked at last week just to see how everything's getting along um, but before we do that as always guys let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer so the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product as always we'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue Okay, so um, now then, uh, let me just quickly, um, oh, just before we, as always, just before we jump in, guys, uh, let's quickly, uh, well, just a quick mentioning of basically of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always um, subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, uh, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com, and I believe you can find some some useful information here. So, um, also just a quick update on what's happening here, how everything has changed during the weekend. Um, on Friday, if you remember, the figure was around 1,600, oh, sorry, 1,000, 1, 000, 1 uh, thousands and something. So basically now, yep, we have managed to overcome the already, the 1,800,000 level. Um, well, to be honest, with the same pace, I mean, uh, no surprise if, if, the figure will continue rising and it will hit 2 million uh, this week. So, well, yeah, unfortunately, that's the situation. The only, um, the interesting thing here is, of course, is the, um, the the fact that the United Kingdom has managed to uh, rise uh, into sixth position now globally in terms of death, uh, in terms of uh, infections, and of course the fourth position in terms of uh, deaths. So um, yeah, of course not not good, um, not really uh, something that uh, to be proud of. But however, it is what it, how it is, and uh, well, I mean, I, hopefully this this can slow down, and uh, hopefully th these figures can start uh, decreasing, um, or at least hold on at the same level. <clears throat> that would be preferred. Um, now then, jumping into a few charts. Um, so Nikkei two two five. I talked about this one last week, and basically what I was telling you um, to keep an eye on the um, some of these levels. And now, on in order to kind of aim for higher levels, we needed to see a nice good push above the um, in uh, nineteen thousand. Uh, sorry, yeah, nineteen thousand five hundred and sixty four territory, sixty four, sixty five, roughly around there. Um, and that's after a break of which level we would aim for uh, further higher levels. Um, um, however, you can see that this morning the index is declining a little bit, is drifting lower. However, it remains above this level still. So this uh, 18,900, let's round it up towards the 950, um, because that's basically the lowest point of 2018. So um, base, yes, for now we are probably, I would say, neutral on this one, um, although this pattern kind of looks more of a, a positive one uh, if you want we can draw a nice upside line here basically taken from the low of the 19th of March and uh, even if we see a drop below this territory below the 18,950 there is still a chance for the bulls maybe to step in somewhere near this upside line and push the index higher However, uh, in order to get a little bit more comfortable with the upside, we will probably wait for a push above the 19,564-65 19, zone, and then, yep, we will aim for higher levels. Um, 
as you can understand uh, some of the European markets are closed today so uh, yep uh, the FTSE and the uh, the DAX are, are closed uh, due to the Easter Monday um, so yeah uh, no no uh, none of these indices are going to be in this review um, however uh, the next one I wanted to show you guys um, is the Shanghai composite now I talked about this one as well last week um, and um, what I was telling you guys here to keep an eye on this potential um, rising veg pattern. Now, again, for now it's too early to talk about that because um, it's still, I mean, it, we have only two touches here and to be honest, we would prefer to see maybe at least three touches on each side and then maybe we'll consider this as a, as a nice uh, rising veg pattern because um, the reason why I'm telling, telling you this to, to, fo to keep an eye on this one because uh, t these uh, patterns tend to break to the downside. Um, so rising veg, veggies tend to break to the downside according to the technical analysis rules. And to be honest, they do work uh, in that, that way sometimes. Um, or actually, I would say most of the times. Um, but uh, of course, we need some confirmation breaks uh, through some of the levels uh, before we could consider, let's say, a further directional move. So, in in other words, for now, guys, uh, keep your eyes on this pattern. Let's say you can see that the index is drifting a little bit lower. Let's see if it can rebound from this lower side of the uh, of the potential uh, rising wedge pattern. And if it can, then yep, we could, we will then aim for the upside again. We will aim for this upper side of the potential veg pattern um, and then we'll take it from there just like I said this is something uh, for now we will probably remain neutral on this one and um, or let's say even even maybe very very cautiously bullish uh, even though we are seeing a bit of a slide here so yeah for now guys uh, keep keep your eyes on this one uh, let's see how this is going to play out and uh, to be honest there's no clear kind of indication on where it's, it could go right now uh, the only thing is just to keep continue observing this one and if we can basically eventually see this pattern here this potential uh, rising veg pattern then yep this is when it could become a little bit more interesting so um, now then, gold. Um, gold uh, had a nice run uh, higher uh, last week, and uh, but this week, oh sorry, this week. Well, this morning, it opened with a gap to the downside. However, it managed to fill that gap a little bit here. Um, and uh, the big question here is, can it stay above the 1680 zone? So this is, it seems that this is a, a bit of a problematic level for this, uh, for this commodity. Um, let's see if it stays. If it stays above the 1680, then yes, we will continue targeting this um, uh, 1700 level and the 1703 uh, mark because um, basically um, for now um, it's yes it is it is more positive than negative it continues to climb higher it is trading above this um, upside support line um, although we did this morning we did see a bit of a uh, a drop below this I mean this one this upside line is a bit of a tentative don't get me wrong I mean it's it's not really something that you re should be focusing mainly um, the main the main focus should still lie on some of these key support and resistance levels now in case uh, this stays above the 1680 81 zone then yes we will aim for higher levels as I said but if this starts dropping lower and let's say if it stays somewhere in this territory well this is a little bit of a neutral one for us uh, because for us to consider some downside areas well we would like to see a drop below this 1645 zone and then we could aim for uh, further declines now then uh, again like I said for now guys keep your eyes on this one yes overall uh, we are a little bit more on the positive side however we would like to see how it behaves near this 1680 territory because if it stays above it then yes there is a good chance for this one to drift further north if if it fails to do so then well I mean this is where we'll remain very cautious now then um, Jumping into WTI oil, um, so uh, here the situation is the same. It's a little bit difficult to be honest. Um, now, last week I spoke about this level here, the 23.58. What I was saying that if we see a good drop below this, then yes, um, 
we will aim for the downside probably uh, you can see that yes we did get a drop lower we did get a close uh, below this um, or should I say yes we did get a close below this level below the um, 23.58 this morning we are seeing a bit of a push uh, um, we had a push already uh, higher above this but now the price is back to this level and basically it continues to balance around here so uh, to be honest um, here uh, we will probably take a very conservative approach and we will first of all we will remain neutral um, and uh, in order for us to aim for lower levels, well, to be honest, we will wait for a drop below this territory, this below that psychological uh, 20 territory, and we would like to see a close, a daily, <coughs> excuse me, a daily close below this psychological 20 zone, and after that, we will consider some downside. For now, it's uh, you cannot really talk about the downside here yet. And uh, uh, that's why, guys, let's be on, let's be careful and cautious, and probably uh, let's um, let's wait for a nice daily close below this territory, below that psychological 20 zone, and then yes, we will aim for further declines. In terms of the upside, also a bit of a conservative approach, a bit of a careful approach. Um, we would need to see a nice good break and a close, a daily close above the 29.11 zone, and then yep, we will aim for higher levels. Ripple. Um, Ripple here is, um, well, this is what I talked about last week. So basically, uh, we managed to break this this upside line, this short-term tentative upside support line taken from the low of the 16th of March. So that's good news for the bears. However, uh, the bears are still cautious because, well, I mean, uh, we need some confirmation breaks. So basically, if we do get a drop below this territory somewhere around here, somewhere this uh, near the 0.1760, uh, then yes, we we will uh, we will aim for uh, deeper extensions to the downside so to be honest it would be quite interesting to see if uh, um, if we could see if we could get a move lower a deeper move lower um, now previously I think on this one I've drawn a, uh, a potential veg pattern uh, yes so that was roughly here so again this is a nice a nice scenario a nice uh, example where for example a uh, maybe not an ideal one but still nevertheless a, a, a nice uh, rising veg pattern uh, kind of broke to the uh, to the downside but uh, to be honest con more confirmation would be needed uh, yes uh, this is not this this move lower here uh, this break through the lower side of the rising wedge had increased uh, the chances for ripple to drift lower but just to get a little bit more comfortable with that with the downside then yep we would like to see a drop below the 0 0.1760 zone and uh, that's the lowest point of December and then yep we will uh, aim for uh, lower levels further declines um, it would, in terms of the, the upside, uh, we would need to see a push above this barrier here. Uh, not whoop, not this one, but this one right here. The uh, 0 0.2052, roughly around there. That's the high of um, the 7th of April. And then, yes, we could aim for higher levels. Um, AUD and ZD. Now, this one, I haven't looked at this one for, for a while, and uh, basically this one's quite interesting because it continued to climb higher. You can see that the, uh, although uh, Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar tend to move uh, in a similar fashion, um, you can see that the Australian dollar was slightly on the stronger side as, uh, from around mid-March. Um, and uh, it continued to push higher and this morning it opened uh, above the uh, it started off its trading above this uh, short term a bit of a tentative downside resistance line taken from the high of the uh, 7th of November 2019 so um, however uh, although we could maybe try to see something positive here um, however you can see that the um, the pair is struggling to for now it's struggling to over overcome the 200 day EMA here. Um, if we eventually do get a nice push above the 200 day EMA, the next potential target for us is, of course, is near this high, near the highest point of March, which is around the 1.0532 mark. So keep your eyes on this one. This is where uh, if it does travel like this, if it does high, travel higher, this could get a hold up here near this barrier and then it could retrace back down and basically maybe even test this, uh, this downside line from above. And then basically it would be interesting to see if it actually can rebound or not. 
with the downside for us even if it travels back below this downside line we would prefer to see a drop below the 1.03 52 zone roughly around here which is uh, near the highs of the 1st of April and near the high of the 7th of April and then yep we could consider maybe deeper extensions to the downside however this is where a little bit of a tricky part is uh, because we do have a nice uh, short-term tentative upside support line here uh, this is where kind of a hold up may occur so that's that's why not only did it drop below this territory, but it also just a break of this upside line would could also do the trick here for more uh, for more buyers. So guys, yep, keep your eyes on this one. Very interesting uh, developments happening here. Uh, we could, like I said, if it dr drifts back below this downside line, don't rush into those um, cells yet because again, like I said, let's be on the safe side, let's be careful and let's wait for a break of this uh, of this territory first at 1.0352, 51 zone and the break of this upside line. Um, for those who are very cautious on this one, actually, um, well, you could of course wait for a break above the 1.0532 zone if you're uh, if you're looking for some upside here, uh, because this a break above this barrier would confirm a forthcoming uh, forthcoming higher high, and uh, yep, maybe more buyers could be joining in. Um, but uh, yep be very careful as I said again for now this could in a way drift higher especially if it pushes above the 200 day EMA if it does that then well let's aim for this 1.0532 and then we will reevaluate everything again then USDJPY quick update on here uh, this one so let me just adjust a few levels guys here so basically uh, what we're going to be looking at here in terms of uh, higher and lower levels so basically the pair managed to drift below this key area of support um, last week it closed below this so the 1.108.58 mark um, now the uh, the pair once this morning is drifting lower um, we will continue targeting the downside we'll be very careful near this 106.92 mark which is the low uh, the current lowest point of April um, it may get a hold up here may could e it could even rebound a little bit here um, basically something uh, like this could be uh, could be possible it could rebound um, and then it could drift lower again because uh, let me just quickly put this on the chart oh, no, probably let me move this because we have a nice uh, potential downside line here forming so uh, for now everything's kind of playing along with according to that line uh, this downside line is taken from the high of the uh, 25th of March so in a way it, there is a good likelihood for this one to drift further south, uh, test the 106.92, maybe even give a little bit of a false breakout here, but then let's say cl still close the daily candle uh, above this barrier. I mean, we've seen this happening many times. Then retrace back up here, fail to move above the downside line, and then get a nice another round of sell-off. Again, I do understand I'm getting a little bit of a ahead of myself here, but uh, again, like I'm just going from the... Um, from the fact that what we have seen in the past so um yep guys for now like i said we are more bearish than bullish on this one and uh yep we'll continue aiming for the downside first we'll aim for this 106.92 and then we'll reevaluate everything again in terms of the ups yeah, the upside uh well the probably the highlighted area must go here now the uh that's going to be the uh, the area for us after which we could after a break of which we could consider uh some higher areas this 109.38 zone, uh, a break above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and yep, we could aim for these higher levels here near the 111.71 70 zone, roughly around there, guys, and then we'll take it from there. USD CAD, um, quick update here, and not to be honest, not much has changed since I've, I've, I've mentioned this one uh, last week. Um, Still, what we're looking here for is a nice good drop below the uh, 1.3922 zone. Now, uh, again, previously I, I was talking about this area, what I was saying that if we get a nice cl close below the 1.3986, uh, then yep, further declines are possible. Yes, it is true. Still, further declines are possible, but... Um, so now, I mean, it, we are still more bearish uh, than bullish on this one, um, but just looking at this price activity right now, excuse me, uh, looking at this price activity right now, uh, 
you can see that it's kind of moving sideways right now a little bit so in a way we would prefer to see maybe a nice good drop below this level right here the 1.3922 in order to get comfortable in the near term with uh, with some extensions to the downside here in terms of the upside um, well, the further it moves uh, to the right, uh, to be honest, then we could shift our potential breakout points here to the upside. Um, so basically, now we can start looking at this. Of course, we'll we'll continue looking at this downside line taken from the high of the nineteenth uh, of March, but we can also now look at the one point forty seventy. Uh, uh, 1.4076 mark roughly around here so uh, which previously as you can see acted as a good area of support and uh, and resistance as well so a nice good pop above this could uh, open the path towards uh, some higher levels here guys um, GBP USD so quick update on this one still waiting for that pop basically I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one because uh, last week I've uh, I've talked about this one and talked about this one and basically we are waiting for a break above the 1.2485 uh, nothing like I said has changed much here uh, if we do eventually see a nice daily close here uh, first of course if we do see a, a break above this barrier then yes we will aim start aiming for higher levels we'll be very careful of course because let's not forget it overall we are still below this downside line however from the short term perspective yes we could see a bit more upside and uh, then yep we could see maybe a test of this 200 EMA here on the on the daily chart and uh, yep, we would take it from there after afterwards um, however uh, don't get me wrong you should not rush into this yet because uh, and we have seen this happening many times where this would let's say would give us a false breakout but then still close the daily candle below this barrier and then drift lower and then basically end up uh, testing this area here again near the 1.22 mark from which it would rebound and push back up here so basically in other words we would be getting ourselves a nice range here so again we cannot really like I said we cannot dismiss this uh, this idea as well because for now you can see that uh, it didn't really it's kind of struggling with this 1.2485 barrier so that's why wait for this one guys uh, wait for a nice good break and then we could uh, start considering Considering maybe higher levels for now is just um, it's it's still tricky. And finally, euro 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 uh, USD. Um, so here uh, the situation is interesting. Let me just for this one. Let me just jump into a four-hour chart. So um, last week I talked about this one, and uh, basically uh, here um, you can see that we've managed to push above the one point. Uh, one point this 1.0926 territory um, it drifted higher but failed to move above the 200 EMA on the four hour chart and failed to move above this 1.0952 but to be honest it's all getting a little bit messy here um, to be honest I'm really not liking this chart anymore probably I would, what I would prefer to do here is maybe start fresh um, because too many lines guys I mean too many levels and might some of them are probably could be out of date already so what we could uh, focus here on on, of course the main thing to focus on is one of the main things of course is this low of February uh, near the 1.0777 mark um, because as you can see it kind of rebounded nicely from this territory and pushed higher now uh, given that it previously was below this downside line here taken from the uh, the highest point of March and uh, now the pair is above this uh, above this line so uh, in a way there's kind of a more chance for this one to drift higher at the same time the pair remains above this upside support line so uh, taken from the low of the um, of the 22nd of March so in a way everything's kind of still leaning towards the upside however uh, the pair is struggling for now to overcome this 200 EMA it keeps knocking on the four-hour chart and specify that so it keeps knocking on the door uh, of that uh, of, of that 200 EMA and kind of still cannot really enter uh, through it so we're keeping an eye keep we'll keep an eye on this barrier here which is uh, roughly around the 1.09 mark which is uh, coinciding with this 200 EMA on the four-hour chart so basically in other words 
if we get a nice pop above this, this would of course place the the rate above the 200 EMA as well. And the well, the next target for us could be somewhere around here near the 1.1039, which is near the highs uh, of 31st of March. Near the high of 31st of March is it 1.1039. So uh, yeah, that's going to be around 1.1039, 40, roughly around there, guys. And if that gets uh, broken, then of course the uh, the high of the March 27th near the 1.1147 could do the trick here for more buyers. So in other words, guys, long story short, in order for us aim to high for higher levels, in order for us to aim for higher levels, then yep, that's what we need here. That's the break we're waiting for. Because don't get me wrong, it may drift a little bit for a little bit more uh, to the right here, um, and then let's say retrace back down again. Maybe it could even drop back below this downside line. However. Uh, we still have this upside line, although it's a bit of a tentative one, but still could be seen as a, a good area for the bulls to step in and drive this one higher again. So that's why we are having a very, we're taking a very conservative approach here in terms of the downside and going to be waiting for this drop here below this 1.0777 and then we will aim for lower levels. We'll aim for that lowest point of March, of course, which is near the 1.0633 and then we would take it from there because again, uh, all this is kind of still very tricky and very cautious for us. I mean, we're, we are very cautious around this. So, and probably the suggestion here is try to be cautious as well because again this is uh, this is a, not a very clear picture although uh, there are uh, a few things pointing to a potential move higher like for example this this uh, current balancing above the downside line near this knocking on the door of the 200 EMA here and of course our oscillators however with the oscillators here it's also a little bit difficult because um, although RSI is kind of pointing a little bit higher you can see that the MACD is kind of really um, currently has is it seems like it's moving trying to move below its trigger line so that's why we will remain a little bit on the cautious side so guys um, I hope you found it useful thank you very much for watching and listening thank you very much guys for all your support for all your likes I really appreciate that and it, to be honest it does mean a lot to me so uh, thank you very much for that guys and I really hope you like I said you found this video useful um, if you want to catch my video later on which is uh, the traders tea time around 13 15 GMT time uh, and uh, yep it will be a recording as well of course guys for for obvious reasons for now uh, but um, yeah guys I hope you stay safe um, if you are trading then yep happy trading if you're still uh, chilling and relaxing then well I mean I continue doing that guys well you'll need this for tomorrow so um, speak to you later guys bye bye